Welcome to this special edition of Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle. I'm here with my co-host Gary the Rude and special guest Harish Krishnaswamy, co-founder and CTO at Mixcom. Welcome, Harish. Uh, thanks, Pat. Thanks, Gary. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and talk to you guys. So can you tell us a little bit about your startup that's in the 5G millimeter wave area? Can you tell us how the company got started and maybe a little bit of history on your technology? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, we're a millimeter wave startup with a primary focus on um, 5G millimeter wave, uh, particularly building front end modules um, for 5G millimeter wave in the 28 gigahertz and the 39 gigahertz and the 24 gigahertz bands. I'm also a professor in the electrical engineering department at Columbia University, and I've been at Columbia for about uh, 11 years now. And uh, through my research career in academia and, um, and you know, before I joined Columbia through my PhD, my area of research is primarily focused on um, novelties and innovations um, in the RFIC design space that would enable new forms of wireless communication. And so through my well, nearly 20 years of research career thus far, uh, I've looked at um, you know, innovations on the RFIC level that would enable various new forms of wireless, uh, millimeter wave being a big one of them, but also other technologies, including uh, full duplex wireless and MIMO wireless. Um, during the mid 2000s, um, during my PhD, I, I did a lot of work on the first silicon millimeter wave phased arrays. At that time, you know, we were looking a lot at the unlicensed band at 60 gigahertz and uh, automotive radar in the 77 gigahertz range. And then after I joined Columbia in 2009, I continued this research on millimeter wave with a special focus on power amplifiers. Uh, and uh, through this period of time, a lot of my research has been funded by federal agencies, primarily DARPA. Around 2015 or so after uh, some work on the DARPA Elastics program, which really focused on silicon millimeter wave power amplifiers and how to make an advance, uh, an order of magnitude advance in output power and significant advances in efficiency, I started to work with the folks at Qualcomm and specifically the, um, the New Jersey location of Qualcomm, um, you know, which is obviously very proximate to us and which used to be uh, a high profile startup in the mid 2000s called Flarion, which developed a lot of the fundamental OFDM IP that uh, went into 4G uh, and uh, was acquired by Qualcomm for that IP. Uh, and through that interaction, I met uh, my co-founder, Frank Ling. And, uh, you know, we, we started to look at the, the IP that had been developed at Columbia. And, uh, you know, at the same time, 5G millimeter wave was really, uh, you know, taking off and uh, driving a lot of interest. And so we decided to uh, spin out a, a startup company. And so, uh, you know, we went out, we raised some money. And over the last... Uh, Two and a half years we've been essentially commercializing this technology um, we've also been very fortunate in that period of time to you know to, to hire some real superstars in this space so um, uh, our ceo mike noonan we we brought him on about a year ago prior to that he was an advisor to the company and he's been um, you know fantastic in the decades of experience that he brings in the um, in the silicon um, uh, microelectronics space, uh, particularly with a focus on uh, startups and entrepreneurship. Uh, we hired uh, Dr. Arun Natarajan as our VP of RF Engineering, um, and uh, he uh, he's uh, also a professor at Oregon State University, but has a uh, had a career at IBM Research before that. And during his time at IBM Research and before that, during his PhD, I would say he really pioneered silicon millimeter wave phased arrays, built the first phased arrays in silicon during his PhD. And then at IBM Research, built the first commercial phased arrays uh, and really develop, developed the technology that underpins uh, large scale phased arrays uh, today. Uh, we also brought on uh, Aristotle Hadjikristos, uh, who comes from a long career at uh, Qualcomm, NXP, Ericsson, Global Foundries, uh, particularly at Qualcomm, uh, worked on the RF360 effort there. So really well versed in what it takes to build front end module products in SOI CMOS uh, and you know, uh, ship them at volumes of hundreds of millions to billions. And so you know, we think we've assembled uh, the dream team when it comes to silicon millimeter wave uh, for 5G. And uh, you know, we, we really look forward to making significant inroads in the space. So as you well know, a number of companies are making uh, millimeter wave RFICs for 5G. What differentiates your technology and the summit IC that you recently announced? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, certainly there's been, um, you know, quite a bit of work on, um, on, on millimeter wave deployments and specifically silicon millimeter wave beam forming ICs as front end modules. Um, uh, I'd, I'd say that, you know, millimeter wave generally is quite challenged in that, um, uh, you know, fundamentally the signal doesn't travel very far. It gets very easily absorbed by um, anything that contains moisture, whether it's, uh, you know, the foliage or the human body, et cetera. Um, and so all of these things challenge millimeter wave link budgets and uh, stand in the way of robust millimeter wave links. So there really is um, you know, a desire from the industry for, for new technologies that particularly improve link budgets as they stand. And so our focus has been uh, on that front and primarily on the power amplifier side. So you know, we exploit SOI CMOS to build power amplifiers um, that achieve higher output power and higher efficiency than the current state of the art. Uh, we, were, we achieve as much as 2x higher uh, efficiency than uh, current solutions that are out there. SOI CMOS, uh, and specifically the, you know, the, the RF SOI suite of processes that Global Foundries offers, um, have many things that really enable uh, improved millimeter wave design. Uh, obviously, you know, SOI CMOS gives you transistors with lower parasitics, and so they give you higher, a higher speed, higher performance. Uh, the back end of the line is also specifically optimized for millimeter wave, but also SOI CMOS allows power amplifier design techniques that improve performance, specifically stacked SOI CMOS power amplifiers. That's an area uh, that, uh, you know, this founding team has worked on for many years preceding when we launched Mixcom, uh, dating back to, uh, you know, millimeter wave stack power amplifiers from 2010 as a part of the DARPA Elastics program. So we've been able to bring design techniques for SOI CMOS power amplifiers that, uh, you know, that advance the state of the art compared to other people that would use that same technology. So you talked a little bit about the stacking to improve power amplifier efficiency and output power, you know, what exact technology do you add that's not already being used? So stacking, what it allows you to do is it allows you to, um, you know, essentially stack transistors on top of each other. So while a single transistor handles limited voltage uh, within its breakdown limits, a stack of transistors handles linearly larger voltage and hence quadratically higher power. But, you know, all those things are sort of easier said than done, right? Especially everything at millimeter wave is hard. So as you start to stack more transistors at millimeter wave, there's several, you know, second order parasitic effects that come in that, uh, that limit performance. And so, uh, you know, we've developed techniques that, uh, that allow us to, to manage uh, those kinds of effects and that allow us to sort of extract best performance uh, from a uh, from a stack power amplifier, and especially in the context of uh, 5G and the kind of waveforms that um, you know that 5G um, uh, you know, utilizes, specifically OFDM waveforms as deep as 64 qm, 256 qm, even in some cases with high peak to average power ratios. So essentially, sort of getting uh, efficiency under those challenges is something that we've developed technology for. And then, you know, finally, I'd mentioned that um, while the power amplifier is perhaps the most central block in the entire beamforming IC, um, you know, the architecture that one exploits for, uh, for, for the IC and for beamforming is extremely critical as well. It's quite possible to design, you know, the best power amplifier out there, but then lose all of uh, the performance and all the plumbing of the array, so to speak. And so sort of knowing how to architect uh, one's array around uh, a high performance uh, power amplifier to extract best system level performance, uh, you know, performance at the scale of a large scale array rather than just a single power amplifier or a single chip um, is also, um, you know, a critical thing that often gets neglected. And so we've developed technologies for that as well. So as a small startup company, you've got limited resources. What kind of uh, partnerships are you establishing to try to accelerate your uh, growth in the market? Uh, you know, that's an excellent question. And certainly I think uh, one that really cuts to, uh, you know, what a startup needs to do to be successful in this space, right? Because everything's expensive, you know, silicon fabrication is expensive, equipment's expensive. So we've been fortunate in our partnerships. I'd say, you know, uh, one of our most significant partnerships is with Global Foundries, our foundry partner. Um, you know, they've been extremely supportive of, of, of startups in this space. And they've particularly, you know, as a company prioritized applications such as 5G millimeter wave, as opposed to trying to be, 
uh, sort of a foundry that really does everything and for instance also explore you know tries to pursue scaling down to the single digit nanometer nodes um, and so you know we've been very fortunate in our relationship with global foundries uh, and that encompasses not just um, you know the fabrication of the ICs but also uh, you know the other things that go into making product including uh, turnkey packaging of these ICs as well as uh, large-scale test and so that's probably uh, you know uh, one of our most significant partnerships that I'd really like to highlight. We also recently, along with the Summit 28 gigahertz front end module that we announced about a month ago, I guess at this point, we announced a partnership with Tau Glass, uh, which is uh, you know probably one of the leading antenna companies out there. Uh, and in partnership with Tau Glass, we announced a, a 16 antenna uh, smart antenna module. And so you know we we, we really uh, enjoy and um, you know uh, really look forward to exploiting that partnership to essentially take. Uh, these beamforming ICs to market in the context of, uh, of uh, antenna module systems. And then finally, uh, we also announced a, a partnership with Richardson RF, uh, RFPD for uh, global sales and distribution. Obviously, you know, the logistics associated with that are also very challenging for a small startup. Uh, and, and so that's, that's a key relationship as well. And so these are the three uh, that I'd say we've announced right now. We have several others that, uh, that we hope to announce in the coming quarters, but we, we definitely see, uh, you know, partnering with leading companies in all the um, you know, auxiliary uh, spaces that, uh, that are adjacent to uh, you know, the, the silicon as very critical to, to our success as well as in general the success of 5G millimeter data. What frequency bands are you currently covering and what are your planned releases coming up in the near future? So the summit beamforming I see that Gary mentioned, uh, we announced it about a, um, a month ago or so, and that's at the 28 gigahertz band, so specifically 26 and a half to 29 and a half uh, gigahertz. We will be announcing our um, 39 gigahertz product uh, shortly in a couple of quarters. Uh, these are our primary bands that we focus on. We also work in the 24 gigahertz band, which is obviously quite uh, significant in Europe. Well, Harish, thank you for uh, joining us for sharing uh, Mixcom's approach to the 5G millimeter wave market. We wish you and the team a lot of success. Thank you very much, Gary. It's uh, you know it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, you know thank you very much for um, you know for the role that you guys play and for you know the excellent coverage that you provide in the space.